Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to The Lender. Previously we started Zack's route, and right off the bat, we discovered some terrible events had happened. Of all the places, it never crossed my mind I'll end up wandering into the public library today, considering I rarely ever visited. Somehow, there has always been this kind of disconnect between me and books in general. Sure, some of them held my attention in my youth, during the brief times of the day I was left to my own with nothing to do, I went for the whole of Grant's collection, as a matter of fact. Read all of them twice or thrice even. But they never did hold it for long. Most of it never even sticked. Especially after I learned it's simply easier to do things myself if I want to learn stuff. This ain't in the plan in the first place. But after Ashley went through the trouble to contact the professor, I can't just ignore it. Nothing but quiet greased me inside, though. Not the typical mom would associate with the library, but one akin to a hush prior to an impending trouble. Or perhaps, I'm just overthinking again. I really like to think I'm just thinking too much about this, that this is just a lack of sleep talking. Regardless, apart from a group of students murmuring in a corner somewhere, the place is free of its usual visitors. All while my footsteps echo in a manner unsettling enough to raise the hairs at the back of my neck. Much to my relief, it does not take me long to find him, being the only occupant in this side of the room. Are you gonna look like the cop? And the priest? Oh, thank God. Professor Andrew Clark. I've never personally met the man, but Ash has spoken highly of him several times. In fact, he is Ash's go-to guy when something's troubling him with a case. My steps are unsure as I approach. You look like a very stereotypical... Professor Mentor character. At any rate, he greets me with a warm smile like a grandson he hasn't seen in a long time. Ashton's friend, I take it. Zachary. <laughs> You'll have to forgive this old man if I don't get your name right. Oh no, you got it. It's Zach. Zachary Steele, Professor Clark. He gestures at the empty seat across the stable while he returns to his books. The next couple of minutes pass in relative silence as he continues to read and take notes from the pile he's accumulated on the table. We might have taken a book first before heading here. Before I can even get far into that idea, the professor clicks the book shut and sets it atop the stack next to him. Ashton told me you were hoping to get answers from me. Although I'm not quite sure what I could share, I'll do my best to help. Of course, there are a lot of things I want to ask. How do we get out of this mess as the first among tens, hundreds of concerns in my head. But in the presence of someone I barely know, the thoughts won't easily form. He's nothing but patient, however, and with enough time to mull over, a question finally forms. Do you believe in the paranormal, Professor? It's supernatural, actually. Don't worry. It's a common mistake to make, but they really are two different things. The other one deals with what we can't explain at the moment, while the other are things we may not have an explanation to. Here. He places a couple papers in front of me, the very same one he was writing on earlier. A study of Luxborn's supernatural culture, in a nutshell. A friend of mine wrote that a few years ago. He took interest in the city after reading about the stories. I have to agree with him here. Even stories dealing with things you don't see with the naked eye can be rife with culture. And this city thrives on it. Just ask the locals. Like ghosts, for example. <laughs> Among other things. The interpretation has changed over the years, though. Various religions, for example, have their own version. It might not always be a spirit now. It could be a memory, or an imprint, an echo, so to speak. Some are born from curses, even. Out of great anger, hatred, or pain, there was this one story. Ah, here it is. Another book is pulled out from the stack and placed upon, open atop the papers. While he speaks with such passion that it makes me wonder if some part of him believes these to be true. It is interesting, though, even if I'm personally not a fan of such stories. And soon, hours pass without my notice. In the end, it asks for something to be sacrificed in order to destroy whatever anchors the wraith. A sad tale, that one. But the simplest grudge can bring the ugliest, even in the kindest person, with some people none the wiser. I highly suspect that if I were to aim for a true ending or an ideal route, I'm assuming I have to take the opportunities to meet Professor Clark every time. Maybe. Oh. I'm sorry, I just went on. 
because he is giving information, and it's always the cliche that they go meet the professor in the library. He's like, well, you've got yourself a great A ghost girl here. You're, you're screwed. And, well, what do we do, professor? I don't know, just figure it out. In so many words. Uh, and Professor Clark is it. Nah, it's good. Are you familiar with the Ermengarde Mansion, though? Oh my god. <laughs> of course. That goes without saying. Who hasn't heard of the local legend? Although, word of the mouth is, someone has already bought it. Oh yeah. Ah yeah, the right couple. What he said. It was a close friend who handled that sale. So I heard. Well, don't think the house being bought by anyone would stop us from talking about it. What is it about the mansion, then? I just want to ask what you think of it, sir. <laughs> We're going to need more than an afternoon for that, young man. You see... It's the kind that has changed over the years, passed down from one person to the next. Sometimes, it's the Lord William who haunts the place. There are versions where it's the lady of the house, but my favorite, a personal favorite, would have to be the ones that followed after the disappearance of the kind daughter. Who's who here? Well, what about these then? There was a moment of hesitation on my part before I pulled Miss Wright's photo and laid them all in front of him. And like Ash, so the professor inspects each print with great interest. That gives me some hope, at least. Hmm, when were these taken? Just the other day. Do you think those are the same? Perhaps. Perhaps not. There were certainly instances when the film would pick up what the human eyes weren't able to see. But then, it could also have been human error. I didn't edit it in any way. You have my word on that, professor. They all just came out like that. Then... If it is what you're thinking, I'd strongly advise against doing something reckless and further tangling with them. Accounts about them may be riveting to you, but most of it often ends in an unpleasant manner. What about those people in the house? If there is something in there, shouldn't they know? I'm sure they're already familiar with the legends, but... Some people might deserve it, however. <laughs> deserve what, sir? All of a sudden... The tenderness in the professor's eyes disappears, his face becoming unreadable. <clears throat> As though catching himself, he hastily clears his throat, gathers his books and rises from his seat. Professor? I'm sorry. I just remembered something I neglected to do. Professor, what? You'll have to excuse me, Zachary. Uh, alright. Do you need any help with that? Don't let my looks fool you, son. I can still carry a few hundreds. I've been doing this for years. Uh, I'll see you some other time if you have any other questions. That was a little curious. Uh, of course. It was nice knowing you, Professor. He doesn't hear it, however. In a few short strides, he's out of the library, leaving me and every piece of this whole mess amidst the oppressive stillness. Despite the answers gleaned, more questions surfaced. If there is even a single way out of this, I hope we find it soon. The moon is well into the night sky by the time I make it back home. My heavy treads and the sound of traffic outside echoing in my ears, filling the empty room with some semblance of life. Nana would scold me if she ever hears me walk like that, but after today, I really can't give a damn about everything. The mattress creaks under my weight as I unceremoniously flop down on it, and I find myself looking at the paper under my grip. An invitation and request to cover an event, the Wright's housewarming party, tomorrow evening. And we know for sure we're going, based on the story. If only it were that easy, they'll give me a chance to talk to her. About that thing in their house. See, I told you, you always can kind of predict the horror cliches, like, he was going to develop the photos, and somebody's going to be off on them, and he's going to feel like an urge to talk to her and warn her. With a sigh, I left, let my hand fall to the side of the bed along with the invitation. I'll think about tomorrow, when my head ain't muddled with thoughts of a headless woman and a haunting spiral of a ghost. Belatedly, it occurs to me that the last meal I ate had been one with Ashton. And an empty, gnawing ache makes itself known, but I can't bring myself to stand up. We're gonna be visited, aren't we? Today was a complete waste of time. And frankly, a disappointment. I don't like this. The lack of serenity. The disquiet. The lack of stable ground to stand on. The part where I do not know what will come tomorrow. Ever since that damn letter, everything has been thrown out of the loop. I wish everything stayed the same. Routine would have been easier to make sense of than this. Closing my eyes, I let the noise from the streets below lull me to sleep. 
At the end, at the very least, that's the one thing that hasn't changed. Okay, near down dawn of the final day. November 1st, the final day. Oh god. Work on the relationships a little bit. Ashton, Rebecca, friends are doing good. Luke, we've not even met, so it doesn't really matter. The melody carries into the hall long before I cross the threshold. Solemn, but gentle and soothing. A reminder of what home is. Pa's firm but meaningful gaze. Ma's wistful smiles. The warm rays filtering through the eaves at sunset. The distinct smell of wet earth and leaves after a long day's rain. And our room. The room. Ma and Pa's pride and joy. A place we were once promised several springs ago. Yet, yet it won't stop. No way! Come back! I'll be good this time! Please don't leave! Please stay! The floorboards are colder than my feet more than it usually is. The walls more forbidding than what I'm used to. Farther and farther the room goes. Ma singing ceases and Pa. I can't hear Pa. <laughs> Loud of the ratchets clanging and the deafening roar of gunshots. And when the screams were placed in the comforting soft melanies, there's only the blinding fear. But when the light breaks... Boy, you're just going back for every traumatic memory now. Your skin has already taken a sickly pale color. Rotten in most parts, blood dripping from every open gnash and lesion on her body. Bony hands grip Hannah's neck like a noose, staining the skin underneath with a vibrant shade of scarlet. Nothing but malice fills the gleam in her eyes. A scream ripples through the air. My whole body feels distant. Every limb heavy with lead, all unable to move at will. Not even so I can wipe the beads of sweat forming at my temple. The rasping of my breath easily fills the room in the wee hours. I force it back into a steady rhythm. There's a tightness in my chest I can't shake off. My heart pounding against it if it's about to burst out. You know, I think I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna make a save. Something cold has settled in my legs. Not the usual chill that comes and goes to the passing breeze from the window. But one strong off the sting, shackle and leave a frigid sensation creeping up my skin. With every struggle I make, the pressure winds winds firmly around my legs. Tighter, and tighter, and tighter. All until it becomes too much. My heart stops. I think I made a good choice by saving. Another draft sweeps into the room and brings it with the iron tang of blood. Thick, suffocating. Filling my nose with a foul, sickening smell as I shift my gaze downwards, and it slowly comes into view. Okay. Now I'm stretching into a hideous smile. That is not comforting at all. An eyes spring with nothing but madness. The stench of gore taints the air around me, and I can't look away. From it, her, from the terror and death of her uncanny, twisted features alone scream. I try to open my mouth to shout, to ask her help, but my voice has left my body altogether. All I have is a painful realization that no kind of plea will ever save me from her. Then suddenly, the bed dips. Go! Oh. The brutal plunge back, to, back into myself jerks me awake. There's no ear-splitting scream, no wild thrashing of limbs. Just a painful, constricting awareness that something has wound itself tightly around my neck. I waste no second pulling it, a blanket, away. But allow myself a few minutes to steady my breathing before getting off the bed. Inhale, hold, exhale. One step, two steps, three. But the dreams have gone worse. Ever since two days ago, no longer are they the small cursory flashes I'm used to, but vivid ones that linger. I can still feel the blood in my hands, the putrid smell of rotting flesh, the sickening crunch of bones breaking with every movement, and her cold, chilling eyes as they bore into me. I draw in one long, ragged breath, and before I know it, I'm walking out the door. Even in the waking world, it reeks. A bench in the park is far from the most private place for thoughts in Luxburn, considering its location at the heart of a bustling city. But in the early hours of the morning, it provides enough peace and quiet for any poor problematic soul who happens to wander here. The city is just waking up, a little later than usual. But knowing what day it is, one can't fall it for being a little tardy just this once. It neither the pleasant morning chill nor the soft twitting of birds does anything to banish the images. Every single one has rooted itself in my head, its claws digging deep in what is no longer a safe place to hide in. London Bridge.
bridges falling down. What? Falling down, falling down. London, London bridges, bridges falling, falling down. down. My, my fair doggy. Take a key and lock him up. Lock, lock him, him up. Lock him up. Lock him up. Take, take some anime and make him, him marathon it. My fair doggy. Use it easy. Finding some pretense down, of peace under the guise of sheer falling optimism. Down, following a regular routine. Down, Speaking over you now. Lady. Now. Take now I don't know what to make of it. Up, Sometimes it's easier to run, easier to hide when everything's falling take apart. That way you don't have to be the first to witness it when it does. This is getting really annoying. Lady. It worked when things London went to bad with the movie. Down, Stop talking. Down, Stop talking. Down, London bridge is falling down. <laughs> They also worked when Mom and Pa were taken from us. Maybe it really is just better if I just... Hey, mister. Singing was awful. Get over, kid. The tiny voice gives me a pause. When look up, a little girl, maybe about six or seven, is peering at me. Two white eyes overflowing with what can only be the natural curiosity one typically sees in children. I vaguely note that St. Goretti uniform she's wearing before returning her greeting. Uh, hey kid. Kylie. Kylie? That's my name. Mama said it's rude not to call people by their names. You're literally a walking chibi anime stereotype. She then flops down on the empty space beside me. Her little legs, still too short to touch the ground, swings the tune of a song she hums under her breath. I don't mind kids. Nana would often invite the ones in her old neighborhood to give them treats. Of course, by then, Sis and I were both too old to play with them, but you get used to the commotion eventually. It's not completely as unpleasant as most people would imply. Kylie seems to be a well-behaved kid anyway. Oh, sorry. Uh, nice to meet you, Kylie. Is Mama here? No, but my big brother's with me. He's taking pictures with his camera over there. She points to the far end of the park. The one closest to the street where a kid is taking shots of something above him. It doesn't look to be birds because all there is on that side of the park are buildings. I don't see what's so interesting with the tip of a building though. I'd take pictures of dogs if I were him. They're cuter. Well, it seems my song variation was actually canon now. Do you have a camera too, mister? Yeah, I'm actually a photographer. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Zachary. I take pictures of ghosts. Unintentionally. Mama said I'm too young to get a camera. I'm sure your mama will eventually give you one. But won't you be late for school like this? Big Brother will get us there on time. Rowan promised Papa. So far, storyline-wise, uh, maybe it's just based on my choices, but I feel like Zachary's... He's kind of main character material, more so than Isabella. Who kind of gets written off a bit. I I'm sure if I kept her alive, she'd appear more. But even then, uh, Zachary seems to be connected to everybody. Uh, he has kind of that even personality a protag has. <laughs> It's sports day, so it's not good if you keep looking like that today. Seems to be a little bit smart, kind of like trying to figure out what's going on. If it ends up raining and we lose, it's your fault. You, you would think Ashton would be like the main, one well, of the main pro tags, but Ashton actually has had like a pretty small role so far. Alright, I'll try not to upset the clouds today, kid. Is it because you're sick, mister? Before I know it, a smile has spread over my face. They say kids ask the toughest questions sometimes, and they sure do, with how sincere Kylie looks. Lying feels like doing her a huge disservice. No, not sick. Just having a very, very bad day. Why is that? Is that like when my big brother ate all of my pudding? He did that once and I cried. It wasn't very nice of him. Yeah, I think so. You see, there's this mean girl. She's giving my friends and I a lot of trouble. She's also a ghost. Hard to keep up when things are like that, you know? Especially when you can't do anything. You know, I saw that cabin in the woods. You should be able to defeat the ghost, going by that one scene. It's kind of scary. Makes you wish things will just stay as peaceful as they used to be. <laughs> Go turn into a frog or whatever. Maybe she just wants to be friends with you? Ha! You know, I actually don't know. Maybe you're on to something. I highly doubt that. One of my friends, she left us because of her. So you see like the little trigger there, pops up on the left, and then the dialogue changes, showing like, hey, this was a split right here, based on your previous choices. What if she's just sad? Or, or maybe she just wants help. That 
that's what happened with Melody. I let her borrow my crayon when she left hers. Now we're playmates. It's not really the same thing, Kylie. What she did, they're pretty bad things. Hmm. I still think there's another reason. Oh, I'm sure she has her reasons. Sadly, those reasons evolved our chests being ripped out. Did you try talking to her? That's what Mama said I should do. It reminds me of a nightmare I had once. <laughs> I don't think that'll work either. You haven't even tried yet. You sound like Rowan. You're just scared, mister. That strikes a chord. Maybe it's the honesty in her tone or simply the truth in the word it's itself. I don't know why, but... I can't help it. <laughs> I laugh. Loud enough to disturb an elderly couple taking a leisure walk nearby. Why are you laughing? <laughs> That's nothing. You're a really smart kid, you know that? That's what I've been doing, ain't it? Go full speed ahead, then backtrack when the going gets tough. Stay in my safe zone, because that's what I know. Once, Dr. Navarro said I should be the first one willing to deal with my problems before anyone else. I didn't show up on her next appointment after that. But, he's right. And though I hate to admit it, knowing what I've seen, but the kid makes a good point, too. I've been so caught up thinking there might not be a way out. Maybe there isn't, or maybe there is. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't just leave it up to fate. Aren't spirits supposed to be humans before too? See, this is this is probably affected by the professor meaning. Right there, that little ding. Had people they cared about, lived a life of their own, smiled and laughed like the rest of us does. That's why I suspect the professor route is the canon, or at least a true ending route. Or at least a piece of the puzzle. Do they really lose all of it after death? You better get to school though, or you'll miss sports day. You should've won yourself some awards, alright? Alright! Can I show it to you when I do? That can cheer people up, right? In the distance, her brother calls for her, and I took that as a sign that to leave. Got things to do to face the first few steps, they say. Nah, I'm good now, I think. Thanks to you. Besides, uh, Mr. needs to go. But you should show it to Mama and Papa. I'm sure they'll be proud of you, Kylie. I will! Thanks, Mr. Bye! I give her a little pat on the head before heading my way. A small gesture of thanks from a stranger she didn't know she might have helped. She may not understand it now, even though at such a young age she already has this understanding of things, but maybe when she's older. The world no longer seems too big for her. But aren't you going to help me, mister? What? With what? Confused, I glance back. Oh no. Dang it, I should have never trusted you. I knew something was up. You look too stereotypical and too anime. Whatever cheer our little talk brought has vanished under the shadows, suddenly dancing in my eyes. This frigid air is most definitely not how the morning chill should feel like. Bitter. Stinging. Unwelcoming. And the kid. What do you think, mister? Are you going to help me? No, I'm gonna... I'm gonna kick you down a baseball field. What do you want from us? The response never comes, however. Because when I blinked... Gone. Hello? Mister? Are you okay? For several passing seconds, I let my stare linger on her face, waiting for any sign of never change. But all that remains is there, in there, is the carefree smile of a child. None of the spite, none of the cold, bloody smile. Nothing, huh? I really need to go, Kylie. It, it was nice meeting you. See you again, mister! <laughs> I break into a run. I don't look back. Now, even as I bump into a couple of passers-by as soon as I'm out on the busy streets. Going insane. This is what it is. If we don't do something soon, we all will be. So let's see how the branching tree is looking so far. Hmm. Well, we've made a lot of progress on this route. This route has been blowing by fast because of our decisions. Let me puzzle things out here. So here's the beginning. That's the whole encounter uh, with the Isabella determination. Here's the question. Here's us meeting Ash, hanging out, meeting the professor. Question. This is also Ash's like meeting. The routes are going actually faster for some reason. I, I think it's because the pacing's picking up now. 
And they're already down here. I'm wondering what this is to do with up top, but... Maybe that's if I went to hang out with Hannah. That's where I would go. Here we can save. The tremors follow me even as I get home. I'd hoped a little stroll around the block for a few hours would help. Instead, I am assaulted with more images of her. Her smile. The loathing in her eyes. The stench of gore and the horrid crunch that comes with every movement she makes. Even old memories have been solely by her. And Ma's song no longer sounds as sweet as it meant to be. In the end, all I got is a sinking feeling I'll never be rid of her image. And another ridiculous idea that may or may not even work. The sun is already hanging low on the horizon when I make it back. And for the first time, coming home feels more like a chore. Only, I didn't arrive to an empty room. Rebecca, my guess? As soon as I open the door, I'm greeted by none other than... Sub Z man No, it's worse. It's Ash. Get out of here. You're not a girl. Whatever proverbial stone has been home at the pit of my stomach automatically flies right out the window at the sight of Ashton. Sitting comfortably on my couch, munching on a bag of chips with both feet propped atop the coffee table. Common sense dictates I should throw him out. Any person of right mind would. But like many other things I've gotten accustomed to, I suddenly take it all in a stride. Not me. Get out of here, Ash. Anime girls only. I never did bother turning away the first time to begin with. Ash, how many times do I have to tell you not to call me Z-Man and stop breaking into my apartment? We'll call the cops on you, but doing that feels like a joke in itself because you are one. I didn't. You gave me a key the last time I did that, remember? After the last one you broke? I can't keep replacing the knob just because you think it'd be amusing to lockpick the hell out of it. And hey, is that my- Ash smirks at me. Because of course, he has the gall to smirk knowing when he did. I brow up. He pops in what's very likely the last piece of chip in his mouth, and folds the wrapper nearly on the table before throwing it on the nearby trash. Behind me, the television starts blaring the music for the end credits of a movie. He's likely been waiting for a while, if he's gotten impatient enough to rummage through my cupboards and watch something. You ate all of it! I was saving that one for the weekend! I'll replace it. <sighs> what exactly is this about? I know I said some real weird things the other day. If this is still about that, I'm not taking it back. It wasn't just a trick of the eye. In an instant, he sits up, and every trace of amusement gone from his face. He clasps his hands in front of him and leads forward. A minuscule gesture meant to ease, yet the grim expression on him tells a different story altogether. No, you're right. There really are some odd things going on here lately. Wait, what? Did I just hear you say that? I'm not kidding, Zack. Speaking of the other day, did you meet with Andrew last time? Yeah, at the library. He was, uh... What did he say about the photographs? Huh? Oh, uh... There's no guarantee it's a supernatural thing. It doesn't always happen, so... That's a dead end right there. Now that I think about it, bothering that guy for this feels pretty silly now. But with the dreams lately... That's all? Did he say anything about the damn letter at all? Did, well, we didn't show the letter. Did you ask him even? Dang it, Zack. I pause, glancing at him skeptically. I don't know where the sudden curiosity is coming from. But if Ashton, calm, cool, and collected, always logical Ashton, takes interest in this, something or someone must have fucked up shit up somewhere. Well, the world is ending. Specifically for us. Seconds pass. One. Two. The apocalypse I expect to go along with d doesn't arrive, however. Yeah, that's really everything. The letter kind of slipped my mind. The photos were more important at that time. There was some stuff about the local horror stories, though. Uh, talked about the curses, and he was really fascinated with the story about a wraith asking for a sacrifice to move on. Kinda nasty if you ask me, but it does make sense if you simply go along with it. I'm not sure how this will help in the grand scheme of things. Why are you asking about this anyway? Becca's... Becca's been saying weird things lately. Well, we're gonna find out in her route, aren't we? Weird like... Same kind of weird Isabella says. I bro, stop right there. I thought you didn't believe in this stuff. I still don't, but even Rebecca, out of all people, claims there's something. So has Ash, like, not been harassed by the ghost at all? Whatever this is, someone has got to look into it. 
Everything about this screams shady. Because if you look, hold up, it's high noon. Ashton is one of the last routes. And he's not mentioned any ghost appearances or hauntings, anything weird. He went to the mansion, he saw the letter. So, you know, I wonder. Are you sure you even have the time? Ain't you busy with your current case? Maybe he's such a skeptic, like the ghost doesn't even bother with him. It's like, ah, he's no fun. I got taken off that one this morning. Didn't you say you were getting closer to... Technically, they would take him off the case because he has personal relation to the victim. Apparently, the higher-ups think I'm doing a horrendous job at it. It doesn't matter, though. If these two cases are connected like I initially thought, then regardless, I'm on the right track. Have you seen the news this morning? Eyebrow goes up. <laughs> He grabs Ramona and cycles through numerous channels and he gets a news report about another guy who's been found dead in the early hours of the morning today. Burned alive this time. Oddly, no fire has spread and whatever damage has been contained within the place the body was found, man, this ghost is just... It's mixing it up now. The room itself, however, has been completely vandalized. Help me. Help me. Help me. Another murder, the authorities claimed. If only they knew. You think this is... I don't know what to think, Zack. He rises from the chair and begins pacing the length of the room, lacing his fingers roughly through his hair. I just know there's something. There must be. There has to be. Fuck! Well, you do have something in mind, I'm, I'm sure. A, a, a plan? Come on, Ash, you're good with that. I do! I'm just not sure if I'll get anything out of it. Well, a plan is better than no plan at all, ain't it? Maybe I was right that they're going to the party specifically to, like, spy on the house. Almost too sudden, he swivels on his heel. And for a passing moment, I thought he was going to shout at me. Instead, Ash simply flops back down on the couch, crosses his arm over his face, and releases a long, ragged breath. His voice comes out smaller, closer to a whisper, when he speaks again. I should have looked into this when she was still here. Maybe none of this would have happened if I did. Technically, yes. But anyway, job's done. Ah, there it is. You need to ask who her is. Every should-haves, could-haves, and would-haves. All our frustrations in one statement, well, all we can do is to cope. What should I say? Maybe the latter would be more emotive to him? But the first one is kind of, like, assertive in the sense, like, make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. So depending on how his personality works, that could either be the better one, because it's seen as, like, a way of, like, I'm not gonna be, like, pity you or anything. Just, you know, get it right, move on, or you'll just take it as an insult. And the latter one is, like, relatable, but it could just cause more drama. We'll leave it up to the coin. Heads? We choose the bottom answer. Tails? We choose the top answer. All right. Is Mississippi 1817 flower? So that's the bottom answer. You ain't the only one stuck in this mess, you know. Which is the bad one? Thanks, Mississippi. Rebecca and I are still here. So yeah, I was right. Now the first one is a little more we'll manage one way or another. Sort of. Don't make it sound so easy. We have no idea what we're dealing with here. I ain't saying it will be. But we gotta do something, yeah? Make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. He grins. Now it reaches his eye, but it's a start. We have to start picking up the piece somewhere and hope everything will turn out for the better at some point. And Ash, well, frustration's a sign. He's always preferred taking matters into his own hands. However, a little reminder there are other people with him won't hurt. You have a point. I always do. You just don't listen. If he minds the bluntness in my words, he doesn't show it. But little by little, things begin to look up, if only for a short while. Ash leaves mere minutes close to sundown. He said little until then, not even hinting what he's aiming to do after. Well, any of my business to know, his whole reticent attitude on the matter gnaws at me. At his hour, the streets are once again busy with people heading home after a hard day work. Little of the bustle matters to him as he steps out the crowded walkway, however. There's only his goal in his mind, and I wager there's nothing I can do to stop him at this point. 
He was probably decided on long before he made the decision to just drop by. But despite this, he lags behind. What's wrong, Ash? What is the calendar date? Let's see. Okay, interesting. So the girl meeting happens before this. The party happens on the 28th. So we've already experienced the party. And we've already seen Hannah, and we had the little dance with her or whatever. So the timeline's filling out pretty well. We have a missing one on October 24th. We're missing something on Tuesday, 18th and 18th. And we're missing more on the 17th. We really need to fill out the 30, 31, and 1. His mouth opens and closes, but whatever he wants to say is lost in the clamor of traffic outside. Is there... is there something I can do? No, just... just say where you are. I can't do that. No can do, Ash. Ask me anything but that. No way in hell I'm gonna pretend there ain't a problem when there is. This is a really big one. And I'll be damned if I let anything happen to you guys while I sit here. I'm done running when things get tough. What? You think you have a better plan? Who knows if it's better? At least it's something. If all this is going to do is put you in danger, then I'd rather you not do anything at all. I never want to wake up to that kind of thing again. Finding out one of my friends has been found dead. Murdered in her own apartment. See the little butterfly twinge and then the dialogue changes. Butterfly effect. One person is enough. This is still better than having no other course of action, yeah? He's about to argue for a moment, but... Look, bro, if things ain't good, I'll be the first one out. But allow me this one thing, I Just this one time. If it doesn't work out, we'll be the first one to know. You can laugh then. Oberate me all you want. But please don't ask me to step aside like I'm incapable of doing anything to help. I have no idea if this is the look on my face or the tone of my voice. Ultimately, although his mouth presses into a thin line, he nods. Do what you want. If you can check in with Rebecca... I'd appreciate it. When he stumbles into the sidewalk and allows the afternoon crowd to swallow him whole, I like to fake the tiny gleam in his eyes as close as we can get to optimism in this situation. Whether that alone will be enough to give me a peaceful sleep tonight remains to be said. Whether that alone will be enough to give me a peaceful sleep tonight remains to be said. October 30th. So that means... The timeline we're working on... Oh! It took out the knife. No, it it added to it. Okay, so, that's, so it's not just... It doesn't just stay at one page. It adds pages based on the date. So let me see if there's any other updates, like updates on Zack. Okay, so that means they, they actually can fill out a lot per thing. Knife falls, and despite my best attempts, sleep continues to elude me. With the image still stuck in my head, flashing every few moments, it catches me off guard. With Ma's lullaby still echoing in my ears, no longer the soft tune it once was. Let's see real quick, how far am I up the branching tree now? I wonder if this route, I mean, I think this route's longer than the previous route as far as pure content variants. But, in a straight run, this is feeling a little bit shorter. The terrible gnawing at the pit of my stomach. It's no wonder I can't bring myself to drift off even for a little while. It's not that there's a complete lack of things to do while waiting for sleep to come, if it ever will. And at a quarter of three in the morning, I find myself cleaning my photography equipment for no other reason just to pass time. Though if I'm going to be honest, it is not the right night terrors that are keeping me wide awake tonight, but the anxiety and hope I'll hear from Ash soon. And for what's perhaps the 42nd time, my eyes shift over to the end of the table, where my phone lies still. Oh, here we go. I've not heard from him since he left. He hasn't promised a call, of course, but a small part of me wishes he would have the common sense, at the very least. Waiting is a tough game, and with the concerns stretching out the minutes far longer than usual, it's impossible for more unpleasant thoughts not to enter my mind. Moreover, it does not help that when the clock finally strikes free. My hand stills. Yep. Really? You gotta do this to me? You gotta be just around the corner of my eye, over my back. Breathing over me. Making that noise. It will be completely under the light. I see my heart didn't leap straight in my throat in that brief second. My whole body has gone motionless. Ears straining for every further sounds. A couple of tense seconds pass. 
Nothing. Of course, with how old the building I'm staying in, power fluctuations ain't anything new. Every now and then, this would happen, leaving a few tenants in rather bad mood. Nothing unusual anymore after a few years of living here. But this time, the sudden hush brings over the stillness that raised the hair at the back of my neck as my heart beating hard against my chest. Something reeks in the air, and in an instant, this place is no longer home. It's a prison. Every rational fiber in my being screams at me to leave. I force myself to swallow and keep a clear head as I lay down all my cleaning tools and begin gathering together the rest of my things scattered about on the table. The camera's body lenses, filters, diffuser phone, and anything my head could reach. The resulting panic eye. Like in the nightmares, is the scent that reaches me first. A foul, putrid smell filling my lungs with a heavy stink of death. My fingers clamp tightly to the camera, pulling close to my body, as if the tiny thing would provide enough protection to whatever it is with me in the room. It won't, but it's the only comfort I have to make a fatal frame on you. Knowing that whoever she is, she had once been human. Perhaps not always, it's gone. Perhaps someone is still there. Hello? I, I, I know you're in here. Hearing that idea I had about taking pictures of ghosts and getting along? We're now going to test that terrible, terrible theory. What do you want? Something moves behind me. A soft sculling over the walls, followed by the squelch and painful creaking of what can only be rotten flesh and broken bones. Without hesitation, I whirl around, my fingers and camera ready, patiently waiting for another movement. I, I can help you! Whatever it is that keeps you here, I can help! That's what the letter's for, ain't it? You don't have to keep taking people's lives! Did it work? Did it work? There's a brief moment of silence after, and for a short while, I think my pleas worked. Then with no warning, the shuffling resumes, and along with it are the sobs of a woman. Oh god, it's ale frame. Where am I looking? Whoa! The light flashes fleetingly one last time, allowing me a glimpse of her grotesque misshapen features before it's once again lost in the darkness. All of a sudden, her tune changes. No longer a soft cry, but a high-pitched shriek brimming with pain, grief, and anger. Did I just screw up? Every ounce of courage I've mustered flees from my body at the sound. And next thing I know, my hands is gripping the knob and I'm wrenching the door open. Her wails fall me as I flee into the night. No, I think I'm alive. Pacing has always been more of Ashton's thing than mine. But I want to think, I sit let the minutes tick by until an idea comes to my mind and my pulse settles down. And yet... Dried leaves and twigs crack under my shoes as I make another pass on them. Terror is too mild to describe what this is. There's no way in hell I'm going back. Hopefully we don't get in an accident. Whatever she is, pleading won't work. The moment we saw that letter, she's been after us. But I can't run. Not this time. Nearly two hours have gone by since I left to comfort my room for the solitude of the park. Please don't be Isabella 2.0. Two excruciating hours since I've started making calls. No one's answering. Maybe Rebecca has always kept her phone line open in case other people need her. It's not held that Ash hasn't said a word where he went off to, as well. Damn it! I knew I should have asked him before I let him leave. Rebecca could be having her own troubles right now. If the routes sync up a certain way, the reason she won't answer is because this might be a point where she can die or live. Knowing him, he could be anywhere. But... But there's really only one place he'll likely be at this time. 